Well, students, thanks for joining me again. And today I have as my special guest, media superstar and now barrister, Mark Holden. Mark, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for reminding me. Well, Mark, uh, you actually initially studied law in uh, Adelaide in yes. the early 1970s, and then you went to the University of New South Wales. You then became a, a singing superstar, a heartthrob with a, I guess, a, a penchant for carnations. That's in fact, right. one of your earliest hits was um, I'm never going to fall in love again, but That's you actually right. did fall in love again. You fell in love with the law again. What brought you back to it? I, was, I lived in America for 18 years, from 1980 to 96. My daughter was conceived and I thought, I'm, I don't want my daughter to grow up in America. I want her to be, uh, have her roots in Australia. I just felt an affinity for Melbourne and, and, and I decided to come back to Melbourne. And, and then I thought, well, what am I going to do? And uh, I, I had dropped out of law in my final year, much to my parents' horror, in, uh, in, the, early, uh, in the early 70s to, to become a pop star. And it's just something I'd always thought was unfinished business. And How hard was it? How hard was it after it all that time fantastic. going back? I, I loved it. I loved going to uni. It actually meant something to me this time around. Um, I had a point of view. I had life experience. So law wasn't some theoretical thing. It became something that really has a place in society. And, and it meant something to me. And uh, particularly intellectual property. I got my only high distinction ever <laughs> you know, in intellectual property. Why? Because I loved it. And I loved sitting in the, in the law library. I loved thinking and working it through. And I was afraid that my brain might you know, find it hard to cope with, but it, but I didn't. Well, well, you certainly have had a a varied um, and well publicised career. In fact, you're one of the very few people I've met who's been a judge before they've been a barrister. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, you've also yes. been a young doctor. You've also, yes, you've also, yes. But but what is the best part of the gig you have now? The best part about being a barrister after all that? I tell you, amazing I tell you, the career most you've had. satisfying thing that the most satisfying experience I've had as a barrister was a children's court matter I had. I got $400 for the two years. So it was a private matter, and a woman who was my own age, an indigenous woman, her son and his partner were both incarcerated, both had drug problems, and she wanted custody of the child. And the child was put in the, 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 the care of the department. And there was a grandmother who was there at the birth going, I'm ready, I'll take the child. And also an indigenous child. And, and so there's, uh, the way the act is written now is, is it's, it's, a, it's a new act and, and, and the act is written to, to, to basically end the stolen generation concept. Mm. And yet here we had a child who was put in the, the, the care of the department, albeit indigenous, albeit the grandmother ready to go. And, and unfortunately, it took us two years. And, I, and, and one of the best moments that I had was with a whole bunch of solicitors sitting in the back of the magistrate, the children's court. And the day we walked out of that court, and, and with a, a lovely, the magistrate gave the child a koala, a little koala. But when she walked out of that court with the actual care of her grandchild in, my ha in her hands, that's the best day I've ever had. So, so I guess a lot of our students, partway through their course, thinking to themselves, it's hard, should I continue doing it? Am I going to be able to make a difference when I finish my law? But you're really saying that you can absolutely make a difference no to people's about lives. It. No question about it. I had cancer in 2010 um, in my first year of practice, actually. And the surgeon was so fantastic to me. He saved my life. He came at a time where I needed his help. Well, I think barristers and lawyers are that person as well, that, that come into a person's life at a, at a critical point where they ha they're in jeopardy of some kind. It might be criminal, it might be financial, it might be, in, in this case, a situation with custody or whatever. And, and you are the surgeon. You are the person that's, that's interacting with their life at a moment of, of real jeopardy at a, at, and, and, and you have a positive role to play. And, and your role in a criminal situation might be just, uh, uh, you know, properly advising, properly, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting the best result you can. It might not be keeping the person out of jail. It might be organising care. 
It might be organizing treatment, making sure things are hooked up. Uh, you know, so th th there's a lot of ways that, it can, that, that you can be positive. Our students um, are postgraduate students. Um, many of them are working, so they've, they've done something else. Yep. Um, they're looking to people like you to give advice. People like you have had a, uh, an enormously varied career, pretty exciting career, come back to the law late. If you had a couple of pieces of advice for our students, taking into account your background and what you're doing now, what would those bits of advice be? I would say for, well, follow your heart. Do, 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 do what makes you feel good. Uh, that not necessarily just a corporate or a, a money ladder. Um, some people money is at, at different stages of your sure. life. That can be very important. But the thing that I've found, and I think this is certainly one thing I can honestly say with my whole heart, is that I do things a lot of times for no money, but I think when you do things well, miraculously money finds you. I've found that in my life. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, that, that, that when I do something well because I love it, because it's important to me, because I'm prepared to dig deep and go hard, miraculously, somehow or other, money turns up. But if, 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 you dr if your drive is to, I is to be social justice, if, you, if your drive is in those areas, I know enough lawyers who, who devote themselves to that and still make a really good living. And, and, and you might give away your time a lot. You know, this person, Mari Shaw, I was telling you about, um, who is a QC that I've juniored on, on a number of matters over the last few years. She will do things f without any expectation of being paid. But miraculously, because she wins, because, because even when she doesn't, you know, she doesn't care. And yet she's a, she's a prosperous person. She's a QC. So, you know, every now and then a big fat check turns up her way. But that's not the determinant for her. Yeah. That does not determine it. What determines it for her is, is there a social justice issue involved? And it, 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 do I feel I'm like I'm on the right side of that social issue? <laughs> Although sometimes we don't have that. You don't necessarily get to choose sure. your, your work sometimes. Sometimes you've got to take on things that might be distasteful to you because everybody deserves a, a proper defence. And, and we don't have that right to really pick and choose it that way. I mean, at least our bar rules tell us we shouldn't. Okay, well, students, I think there's some pretty good advice there. Uh, follow your heart, be passionate about what you want to achieve, whether it is in a large law firm or doing socially just work, uh, but follow your heart, and you too, like Mark, could then, who knows, get a touchdown. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>